So, over the past few years, there have been no shortage of next-gen Switch rumors appearing frequently within the news cycle. And I am sure many of you are aware of that because every time next-gen Nintendo rumors pop up, you all tell me in the comment section that you wish I would say something about them. But if I'm being honest, well, I've known for years from a few contexts that there was something going on with a next-gen console being co-developed by NVIDIA with Nintendo. If I'm being honest, I was never really that interested in the console since I briefly touched on it in a video in 2021 where I really just confirmed the basics. Like the fact that it wasn't coming out until at least five years after the original Switch had launched. And then I also confirmed that the next-gen hardware would probably have a couple of tweaks from Lovelace in it based on how some people were talking about it. But that also, this console was almost certainly going to be predominantly based on some variant of 8 nanometer Orin, which was predominantly an Ampere architecture. And so because of that, I didn't expect it to be that powerful. I didn't expect it to do anything that new, like it was probably going to use a similar or the same basic form factor as the Switch. And so I didn't find it that interesting. Well, until recently, because... It's not out yet, and I have to be honest. Well, I didn't think it would launch in 2022. I thought there was a chance it could launch in 2023, and I definitely expected it to launch by 2024. I'm on record saying that, and now that we are here, early 2024, and it seems like, well, there are rumors floating around that it might launch, not launch until 2025, I've been forced to call this into question. If something is wrong with the Switch 2, which... Actually, some recent things I said got someone at NVIDIA to reach out to me. You see, in a recent Die Shrink, I said this. Almost two years later after I first started hearing it was coming. So I believe the original was 8 nanometer. If this is, they have to have switched designs, in my opinion, or it, or or something is wrong fundamentally with what they wanted to do with it, I think. It makes sense to me why they're cheaping out here. But you have... <laughs> two or three more years to that and i go this does not make sense at yeah, all it, and it's it, going to start getting beaten by like 300 hundred dollar windows handhelds you see upon listening to this episode someone at nvidia told me that to their knowledge there is nothing wrong with the switch to hardware or software and that most likely Nintendo is just waiting to sell through the majority of the remaining Switch stock right now and polishing up some games for launch of the next-gen console. In fact, this contact, who is one of my best NVIDIA sources, one of the sources key to my NVIDIA Super leaks that I put out recently, this person wanted to emphasize that the way Nintendo looks at this is very different from Xbox and PlayStation, where every year that they wait to release a console that's done is not a year where they're worried about their console becoming more and more obsolete from the perspective of its specs. It's just another year of polish, another year to sell through the remaining OG Switch stock they have. Which, look, I can already see some people getting ready to type in all caps, Duh, you should know Nintendo doesn't care about specs and performance. But I actually do need to push back on those people just a little bit here to put things into perspective versus what the Switch did when it came out and what the Switch 2 is going to have to compete with when it comes out. You see... When the original Switch launched, no, it wasn't the most modern NVIDIA architecture it could have used, and it definitely looked a bit weak for the time. But it also really had no competition. You see, this here, this atom-powered weakling, is basically the only thing that remotely competed with the Switch. PlayStation had completely given up on competing in mobile gaming, and there was no burgeoning Windows handheld market. It was basically the Switch dropped, and it was either that or some cell phone with shaky controller support. Again, even... Gaming on a smartphone was not where it was today. Today, there are tons of decent controller options for playing on your smartphone on the go. And the Steam Deck is already there, doing very well. The Switch 2 is going to have to deal with that and the Steam Deck too. I'm sure of that, and I'll talk about that more later in this video. And in addition to that, there's tons of innovative hot point and Strix handheld gaming designs out there that are growing more and more prevalent by the day, and there may even be a new dedicated Sony handheld with a massive AAA gaming library attached to it. So, look, just don't forget all of that. 
The Switch did do very, very well, but it wasn't really as weak for its time as you might think, considering the complete lack of competition. Yeah, they didn't go with, I don't know, Pascal or Volta mobile graphics, but Maxwell versus an Atom handheld? That's still an easy decision for most people, especially when there's the catalog of Nintendo games behind it, and that's just not going to be the market now. The market now may have a new Sony handheld, tons of powerful Windows handhelds to choose from, and even dedicated stuff like the Steam Deck. So I do wonder, just a little bit, when I show you what the Nintendo Switch 2 specs are, if they're a little bit asleep at the wheel, that if they cheap out, cheaping out before didn't really matter, but it might this time. And now I want to get to what I am told the specs are for the Nintendo Switch 2 and what you should expect out of the performance from those specs. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Fumbling around with laptop, phone, and AirPod chargers all at the same time as you struggle to bring all of your charging needs with you on the go. There has to be a better way. There is a better way. This piece of content is brought to you by the Basis Digital Fast Scan Charger, a revolutionary 240 watt charger with DC that equals one AC laptop charger, three USB C laptop chargers, and one USB A charger all in one device. It's one device as good as five at the same time. This five port. 240 watt charger just makes your life easier. It can charge a MacBook Pro 16 to 55% in 30 minutes, charge a USB-C or non-USB-C laptop like my HP. It came with the adapter to just charge an HP laptop and it works. It can do all of these things ultra fast. It has power delivery 3.1 for your devices. And through its touch display, it actually allows you to keep track of your charging progress for all of your devices, which was really cool. And yeah, it even lets you monitor all of this through in-app controls from your smartphone. Support Moore's Law is Dead by clicking on that link in the description and extra support Moore's Law is Dead by buying that product through said link. If you are interested, check out the Basis Digital Fast Scan Charger today. All right, so like I said earlier in this video, a contact of mine at NVIDIA reached out to me and spurred me into asking even more people about what was going on with the Switch 2. And in addition to that first quote I showed you, a couple other sources also confirmed some things to me as well. I'm going to put those on screen now. Now, this first additional source here told me that while they are not close to the project at NVIDIA, that they can say that the Samsung 8 nanometer node is a perfect match for Nintendo's next-gen console. And that's because it is the lowest cost per transistor node on the market, and it's not expected to be as competitive for capacity as more modern nodes over the next few years. And really, both of those points are important for Nintendo. Uh, most obviously, the point about the cost, yet yeah, Nintendo likes to sell their consoles for a decent profit. They don't like to sell their consoles at cost and try to make it up for in the software afterwards, like PlayStation and Xbox do. So going with really the most economical node on the market, Samsung 8 nanometer makes a lot of sense. But it also makes sense because, well, if they were to go with, for example, TSMC 6 nanometer, that's not the most advanced node, certainly not by the time the Switch 2 comes out. But it is the node that is being used by the PlayStation 5 Slim and by the Steam Deck and by just dozens and dozens of other products and chiplets at AMD. And if they were bidding against those companies, well, they would both have to maybe occasionally pay the, the equivalent of surge pricing. But also, they will only be able to make a certain amount of consoles every month. Whereas if they go with Samsung 8 nanometer, that is slowly going to be vacated by NVIDIA as NVIDIA moves to all much more modern nodes. They're done making ampere well on samsung 8 nanometer nintendo can basically get as many wafers as they want for this thing and have no hindrance to selling hundreds of millions of switch twos if it is a huge success now one other thing that first source told me is that we should remember that with 128-bit lpddr5 not gddr6 lpddr5 that nintendo could realistically choose eight gigabyte 12 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte capacities for the SOC that they designed for Nintendo, which I think is important because this whole time I've basically been assuming Nintendo's going to decide between 8 and 16 gigabytes and forgot, 
oh yeah, they actually could go with 12 gigabytes if they want to. And I'll talk about why they might want to do that later in this video. But first, let's get to that second source. This second source here had way more details about the Switch 2. And well, one of the main ones was that they don't really have it on the radar anymore. That right now, this person is focused on finishing up validation for Blackwell. And that Switch 2 Silicon has been done since late 2022 which entirely lines up with things I heard years ago, that dev kits were ready for maybe 2022, certainly 2023, that the console should launch 2023, 2024. So this for me was kind of a sanity check here of just, okay, so I'm not crazy. All of these rumors and the hacks out of NVIDIA about eight nanometer products, despite the Switch not coming out yet, or should I say the Switch 2 not coming out yet, no, as far as I can tell, nothing has really changed. Nintendo has just been sitting there with this eight nanometer design for years. Now, this person also told me that the Digital Foundry article looking at T239 processor that was leaked from the NVIDIA hack is an almost entirely correct summary of what's true about the silicon in the Switch 2. This person told me that NVIDIA presented several options to Nintendo, including one that utilized Lovelace, and they basically just decided to go with a cost-optimized version of Orin. It had some efficiency tweaks and some backported parts of Lovelace in it, but it's for the most part based on Ampere, and it will be on 8 nanometer. Again, there will be some goodies in there that make it a bit better than just bog standard ampere but for the most part it's just a cost and efficiency optimized and modernized version of ampere despite potentially not coming out till 2025 oh and this is fun this person also told me that amd bid against N nvidia for the switch 2 contract hard and they almost got it but ended up losing it by a hair in the end and so there you go. Basically, some version of these specs you're seeing on screen here, which is 1536 CUDA cores, an 8-core ARM processor, and a 128-bit LPDDR5 memory controller. Some version of these specs and these extra little bonuses here are what's likely in the Switch 2, and I'll be honest about its performance. If NVIDIA and Nintendo were to utilize the full die that I've shown you there, with clock speeds above 1.2 gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of the fastest LPDDR5 on the market, I think we'd honestly be looking at something that is around the raw performance of an Xbox Series S, but with better ray tracing, console optimized DLSS, and enough VRAM to actually run more modern games than the Series S. And that would be really exciting. But I have to say, that is the pie-in-the-sky outcome here of what Nintendo can choose to go with based on the SoC NVIDIA design for them. And it's also incredibly likely that instead, they may disable this thing down to 1408 CUDA cores or lower, that they may have stock clocks even will docked be 1 gigahertz or lower, and they may go with 8 gigabytes of RAM total, which I do think would hold it back. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for 12 gigabytes. I'll be pleasantly surprised, honestly, if Nintendo went with 12 gigabytes, let alone 16. And what this all means in terms of the performance that you should expect out of the Switch 2 is that at a minimum, I believe it is looking like it will outperform the Steam Deck at least by a little bit. Indeed, the only thing that I think could make it be held back versus the Steam Deck is if they only went with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Whereas, especially if they went with 16 gigabytes, let alone 12 gigabytes, they actually kept clock speeds at a reasonable level they could get to something that's around a Xbox Series S, but on the go with DLSS support and better ray tracing. And at that end of the spectrum, it would actually feel like a, a very modern handheld gaming device, even if Nintendo's dragging their feet. So again, performance will be somewhere between better than a Steam Deck and around a Series S, but with added enhancements. And if it has 12 gigabytes of RAM, I really actually do not think people will be disappointed by this thing. In fact, if it comes with at least 12 gigabytes of RAM, 
I actually think it's going to run AAA third-party games much better long-term than the original Switch did, which I think is very exciting because if they could just, just give it 12 gigabytes of RAM, a lot of people will see this as a totally viable, somewhat enthusiast mobile gaming console when it's putting out visuals that look like this at least at 30 frames per second or higher, which I do believe the simulated graphics that Digital Foundry did with an RTX 2050 this is what I do believe the console will be capable of at a minimum, at least at launch. And it's really just up to Nintendo and the specs they decide to cheap out on if it will be able to hold up this level of visual quality for years to come. All right. Now, the final thing to talk about when it comes to the Switch 2 is, of course, price, which I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not even going to bother asking any of my sources about what it will cost because I know that decision is made at the top of Nintendo and it could not be made until maybe a week before they announce it. But what I will do is say this, the RTX 2050, yeah, I agree with Digital Foundry, that's the closest card that you can use to simulate switch performance and if we want to know how much the switch 2 should cost why don't we just go look at how much one of those laptops cost which if you go and look it up you can find widely available lenovo laptops with an rtx 2050 and the total ram 12 gigabytes and except this laptop unlike the switch 2 comes with a 120 hertz display or at least i doubt the switch 2 has a 120 hertz display i guess i don't know for sure but you know this is a laptop that though having a cheap graphics card you know it's got its own ryzen processor 12 gigabytes of ram total 120 hertz display and it's a full laptop with definitely overall more expensive components than what will be in the switch 2 if lenovo can do this for 499 which remember Lenovo wants to make a profit on this laptop just like Nintendo does, but maybe Nintendo wants higher margin. It still is more expensive components. So at a minimum, I would say the most I expect the Switch 2 to cost is $499, and I honestly do think somewhere between that and $399 is likely. To be honest, if Nintendo wanted to be aggressive, they could probably price this thing at $349 and still have a slight profit, but I think $399 to $499 is what is most likely and yeah well i guess one more thing that i want to touch on before i close this video and that's that one surprising detail you know one of those extra little details that emerged from one of my sources while i was talking to them about this subject it was apparently that nvidia right now is getting serious about making more handheld gaming devices with their graphics ip in them that nvidia right now is not happy with the fact that amd has a successful steam deck out there that they might also have a new playstation handheld powered by amd and that at the same time there are things like the rog ally and just really dozens of other handheld gaming windows devices all powered by amd nvidia is worried they're missing a boat here and i have been told directly that they are looking into working with somebody on a premium handheld gaming device because well from nvidia's perspective right now if you're just the layman looking around it'll go geez almost every console uses amd except for well except for the weakest one nvidia doesn't like that and i've heard they may even partner with intel to make a premium gaming handheld years from now but again it would be years from now and i just thought it would be fun to drop that little tidbit on all of you there and no it is not in the steam deck too i will tell you now amd got the contract for the steam deck too and again so i'm sure nvidia is looking at that steam deck 2 playstation handheld all these other things and going we need to make something and apparently they might but any discussion of that further will be for another video that is going to do it for this one. And I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, remember to hit the like button, to comment below, and to share this with your friends, to spread this. It really does help so much make this channel more successful. And the more successful this channel is, the more content and higher quality content you will get. And you know, the best way to show support actually is to support us on Patreon. I mentioned it in this video, but a new die shrink just came out. It's like an hour long bonus video 
with bonus little tidbits about upcoming products, like graphics and everything that you would expect from a fully produced video out of this channel. Ad free, you can watch that in multiple of those dropping every month for just two dollars a month. And there's a catalog of hundreds of bonus pieces of content that you'll gain access to instantly as well. And uh, well, I guess no matter what, though, if you made it this far, at a minimum, thank you for watching. <laughs>